Okay, sisters, so I'm going to be really fast because I've got a crying baby, but I want to be consistent and faithful to finishing the things that I say I'm going to do for the Most High. So real quickly, what I was trying to share earlier is out of Psalms 1, verses 1 through 6. I want to encourage you to read that. And basically, um, it talks about not... You know, um, not being ungodly or not not receiving the counsel of the ungodly not uh, walking in the way of the ungodly not standing in the um not standing in the uh, presence of uh, of sinners not sitting in the seat of scorners so basically that scripture is giving the concept of a progressive changing of one's um character or one's even ultimate destiny based on the influences um, that one is heeding in their lives. And so I would say when it comes to looking at qualities that you would like to find in a mate, one of the, the primary things that you would want to take a look at is um, his uh, influences. Those, those people and things that he is most heavily influenced by. Um, in Psalms 1... One through six, it says, blessed is he who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So in other words, the flip side of blessed is he who walks in the counsel, walks not in the uncounsel. The flip side of that is the person who does walk in the counsel of the ungodly is probably not blessed, right? So you want to be connected with a man who is blessed of the most high, who is receiving the favor of the most high so one of the primary things you want to look at is is this man what we would consider godly or is he um in favor is he is he righteous meaning is he in right standing or walking a right lifestyle before the most high um the concept in hebrew is zadik which means um to to live rightly or upright um so um that is the primary um primary thing that you would want to be looking for in a man um, that you would want to be married to is, is does he walk in the counsel of the ungodly? Um, is he having a progressive spiral in his life downward towards um, um, the ungodly influences that he's allowing in his life? You know, there's another scripture in Proverbs that says, blessed is, um, it says, um, it warns us not to hang out with people who are angry. Because when we hang out with people who are angry, we will become angry and we will take on similar behaviors. So really looking at the mate, the potential mate, looking at who he's influenced by, who does he hang out with, what kind of music does he listen to, um, you know, what kind of people does he worship with, um, how, who does he fellowship with. And so those kinds of things are going to be really critical in determining if this is someone who is moving in an upward progression towards closeness with the most high or is he moving in the opposite direction so i gave a bunch of other scriptures in the short video that i posted before this um, i gave psalms 1 1 through 6 uh, titus 2 7 psalms 119 9 through 16 joshua 1 9 proverbs 27 17 micah 6 8 psalms 112 1 through 10 psalms 37 23 Deuteronomy 31 6, Proverbs 22 29, 1 Kings 2 1 through 3. All of these scriptures are telling us about qualities that Yah looks at as being good qualities in a man. And so, of course, if Yah thinks that they're good qualities in a man, surely we would want to agree with him and think that those would be good qualities to have in a mate. So, we want to be looking for qualities such as, and I'm going to give you just some key words that I found in reading those scriptures. Some of the key words regarding the man's behavior that would be a suitable mate uh, for a woman who's uh, trying to live submitted to God. Um, you would want this man to be righteous. You would want him to be uh, faithful, loving, just and fair, kind, humble, gracious, gentle. Um, now, are we saying he has to be perfect? No, we're saying that he's, again, walking in a progressive uh, movement towards closer relationship with the Most High. That's the foundation. Is he doing that? What if he's only 18? You're only 18. These same things would apply. What are his influences? What are his, um, 
what are his what is he feeding himself intellectually and spiritually you know what kind of books is he reading what kind of music is he listening to what kind of friends does he have these are things that would indicate you know the direction or the, the trajectory that his life is moving in um, again I want to close by saying this when I was studying these things about what it is that I we would want to be looking for in a mate um, what really weighed heavily on me is my own behavior you know it isn't the most high like that I found that in my walk with him that rather than pointing at someone else and looking at their flaws um, he will often point out to me my flaws and the things that I need to be working on so it is wise counsel to have some things in mind that you are looking for in a mate you know to look for those qualities that I shared I really encourage you to look at the scriptures that I, I, I read out to you I'll try to post them in the comments um, because you want to meditate on these things so that you can recognize godly character in a man when you see it I, I don't want to belabor that uh, because I want you to do the work I want you to read the scripture and I want you to understand for yourself from the Most High what he's saying the character qualities are in a man that's pleasing to him. Um, and then lastly, what I want to say to you is what, what, what I really want to begin to do is I want to really begin to talk about some things that I think are really relevant for us as women, especially women who are wanting to be in relationships or who are currently in marriages, um, who are raising children. There's a concept in Hebrew that is called hakrat tova, and that means the qualities of the heart. And I want to start to talk about the qualities of the heart over the next few videos that I post because if we find a good man, I mean, well, really the scripture says the man will find us. But if a good man finds us, and we don't have the right qualities of heart, uh, we're going to destroy the relationship before it even gets off the ground. Or we will marry and destroy the marriage. Um, and so I want to just really get into some understanding about hakrat tova, the qualities of the heart that we would need to cultivate so that we could have successful marriages, so that we could have successful sisterhoods, so that we could have successful um experiences as mothers um, one of the other things that has been really on my heart a lot is just about you know all the negativity that is going on in the world and, and around us and how easy it is for us to focus on those negative things and and dwell upon those things and you know that's another form of walking in the counsel of the ungodly um, when we dwell on the negative it's, it's another way of letting the counsel of the ungodly seep into our spirit, seep into our souls. And um, when we do that, what happens is we develop a bitterness. Um, and this bitterness comes out of us in ways that we don't even realize it's coming out of us. You know, um, we, sometimes I, I mean, and I've heard men um, and pastors in particular when I was in the church um, preach about, you know, contentious women and how it's better for a man to be on the roof than to be in a home with a contentious woman. And so I'm not here to down women because I think that, you know, we get a lot of that, especially if we're women of color. Uh, what I'm here to do is to encourage us and to offer some healing um, and some balm to our wounds. And, um, you know, while it is wisdom to make very good choices in terms of who we're going to be in relationship with, it is also wisdom to spend ample time working on who we are as people, who we are as a woman, um, so that we have um, the tools that we need in order to build a marriage. No man is gonna be perfect. No man is gonna have every quality that I read to you on that list. No man is going to have um, every um, perfect character quality that any book says that a man should have. But, but what's going to make the difference is how you are able to respond to that man. Um, and once you're in a marriage, he's what you've got. And so when you enter into that covenant, when you enter into that covenant, you have to um, use the qualities of your heart to love this man, um, even though he may not be um, all of the qualities that you thought he was, or even though he may not be all of um, the qualities that you, you hoped for, um, he's 
going to be an imperfect man, just like we are imperfect women. And so while we do want to look at these qualities, we want to look for righteousness, which is right standing, not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. We want to look for gentleness. We want to look for faith. We want him to be loving. We want him to be um, fair. We want him to be kind and humble and gracious, merciful. We want him to be these things, but we need to be working on being these things ourselves. And so we're going to be talking about Hakra Tova in the next few videos. And I hope that you'll come with me. H honey, I asked you to wait a moment, okay? Okay. That was the grandbaby. I got babies everywhere tonight. Um, so uh, as we work on these qualities of the heart and as we find ways to apply the things that we're learning, um, I believe that if you don't have a mate in very due season, um, the Most High will bring him to you. And I believe if you do have a mate, that we're going to see um, changes in our marriages in ways that will bless us. And most importantly, I believe that we will be pleasing to the Most High as we work on these qualities. So I apologize for all the interruptions tonight and for the, having to do a couple of videos. But, you know, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, um, my primary goal is to be a mom and to be a wife and to be a grandmother and to be, um, you know, the, the, the keeper of the home that Yah has called me to be. Um, but in doing that... I also don't want to neglect the sharing with other women and the sharing, especially with younger women, um, because, you know, the scriptures do admonish us to do that. Um, and so I hope that um, you were able to get something out of tonight, uh, even though it wasn't um, as uninterrupted as I would have liked for it to have been. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you, Ebony, for being on. And, and Sonia, I see you. I haven't met you personally, but I'm so honored that you joined me tonight and Natasha I see you I love you and um, I just want to want to close with saying that um, it's important beloved for us to heal so many of us especially women of color um, have come from situations that perhaps were difficult um, you know, it's just what time we're in in the world scheme of things and the history of, of time. It's it's a difficult time. You know, um, a lot of times we grew up in families where, you know, they may have been broken or we grew up in homes where um, there may have been abuse or violence. And I'm not saying every woman of color had this experience. Um, I'm going to say that some of us did. And I'm going to say that a lot of us, although we may not have had abusive experiences, we did experience dysfunction because basically that's what sin is, is it's missing Yah's mark. It's missing the mark of how we were created to function, how we were created to interact with each other, how we were created to parent, how we were created to be a wife or be a, hus a husband. So when we miss the mark or when we dysfunction, it affects our kids. And none of us grew up in a home that perfectly hit the mark all the time. Some of us grew up in homes that missed the mark more than it hit. And so, um, if that's our situation, we need healing. Um, what I have found is that it, it seems to me like there is almost, and I don't want to say it's a spirit, but I think it is. Um, I don't want to sound all ooey gooey and super, super, you know, weird. But it seems as though there is a sentiment being driven by a spirit that is going across um, the world, but specifically I'm feeling it in the nation where we live, in the United States, of women hating. Like, like legitimate, like women bashing and women hating. Um, it's, it's, it's really different than what I've seen in my lifetime. Um, there's a hostility between men and women. Um, there's a hostility present in marriages. Um, hostility present in young men when they speak of women. Uh, we got to heal from that. I mean, 
you know, we know that things aren't going to be 100% perfect until we're in the kingdom. But we can do our best and we can do our part to bring healing and reconciliation between men and women in our communities, between mothers and children and men and children, fathers and children. Um, we we got to heal. And, I, and since we can't control anyone but ourselves, um, I think we need to start with ourselves. And so, you know, the last three, four videos that I've done have been about, you know, before you're married and what to look for and kind of some concepts that I've learned. Um, but now I want to focus on us and our part. And whether we're in a marriage or whether we're not and we're hoping for marriage or whether that season of our life is done, we still have to focus on Hakrat Tova, the qualities of our heart. So I look forward to coming back to you next week and talking more with you about what I'm learning, about what Yah wants in terms of the qualities of our heart, how we can be treasures for Him. Um, I want to share with you and I want you to share with me. Feel free to message me during the week. Um, I'm going to upload this video to um, YouTube. Feel free to subscribe. I hope that you will subscribe. Um, and tell other women about what we're doing if you like uh, what we're talking about and uh, you're enjoying the things that we're learning together or that I'm sharing with you, please let other women know because my goal is really not to be famous or not to be, you know, a star in the Hebrew community. Um, my goal is to really reach women who are in need of help, who are in need of counsel. Um, Lastly, I want to say this, that, you know, when I was reading Psalms 1, uh, 1 through 6, what struck me is that it says, you know, blessed is he who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Really, what it means to be ungodly is to be ignorant of Yah, to be ignorant of Yah, to be ignorant of his ways. That's what it means to be ungodly, to be ignorant of his ways and to miss the mark. So we want to strive to be knowledgeable in his ways, to know him, and, and so that he knows us. Anyway, that's all I'm going to share tonight. Thank you for your patience with me tonight and with, uh, for your patience with my family. And um, I love you with the love of the Most High. And until we talk again next week, shalom, shalom.